Hello, Ruth. Um, this is uh, Eugene. I'm just going over some of the comments that you've left on the um, uh, quite a few comments you've um, left on the blogs. I mean, the uh, on my videos. Um, some of which are here on um, the video I did about my blog. Um, so what I'd like to do, uh, just real quick, is look at the ace gene. Um, hold on, let me see what this is. Um, some of your, okay, some of your um, comments are winding up in my spam folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click that. Um, okay. Seems like you're having uh, a little bit of difficulty with the ace gene. Hold on, Fox P2. Um, I don't really use uh, Unipro much. I haven't used that uh, from the beginning. I definitely did not use it when I was doing these original comparisons. So for me to use these uh, Unipro identifiers would mean that I'd have to go, and I actually have gone and looked at it and and have begun to incorporate it into some of my research. Um, I'm not really a geneticist. I'm more of a armchair geneticist, amateur, um, who's looked at the evidence, is trying, or in the past, has tried to look at the evidence to see what it suggests instead of just listening to whatever the experts say. Um, I don't totally discount everything the ev the uh, the experts say but I'm really more interested in what the evidence says so um, here you're talking about uh, Fox P2 um, we'll get to that later I, I, I looked at Fox P2 for quite a while and could I just couldn't find where anything that um, Richard Dawkins had said was true um, and some of it was somewhat misleading but giving him the benefit of the doubt when I looked at it there were numerous problems um, that I went over in another video but um, what I'd like to focus on here is the blast you said you're having some difficulty with the blast of the ace gene because it's so large um, Um, and the uh, cluster omega algorithm had you had a problem with that. Um, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do actually, well, first let me see. Okay, and you're splitting it up and and doing blast on the individual exons, which is an interesting approach. Um, let me show you really more. If you go to um, CCDS, which is linked in this case for the um, um, for the ACE gene in human then um, it's going to give you a breakdown of the chromosomal locations um, here and then it's going to give you the nucleotide sequence minus the introns so it's actually quite a long um, so this is just the exon sequences and usually they um, annotate any splice or alternate um, exons um, they'll highlight them like here in, in blue they would hi um, highlighting in, uh, indicates alternate exons so you'll have um, one exon here then another exon here etc etc also what's kind of interesting is if you um, when you mouse over it actually gives you like here is the methionine, uh, here is a uh, glucine. It gives you the um, codons, which is just kind of neat. Um, and actually, if you click on it, let me show you. If you click on that, it's going to highlight it. In fact, you can click on several of them if you like, and it'll um, color code them uh, as to the amino acid the codon um, codes for. And if you come down here you'll find the um, translation for the amino acid sequence and you'll see uh, also highlighted 
are the ones that you clicked on above for the codons and, and it's going to light up the amino acid in the amino acid translation sequence which is kind of neat anyhow um, but what I did just to let you know is I basically cut and paste this entire nucleotide sequence you could do the same thing for the um, amino acid sequence if you like because um, we do know how you like those protein sequences uh, and blasting them in Uniprot but anyway if you um, use the blast sequence in the ensemble platform you can do the same thing um, and here's where um, I ran a blat actually it was a blat because it's faster um, for the amino not not for the amino acid for the um, nucleotide sequence for the ACE gene and I came up with um, with this uh, alignment summary um, and most of the um, percent IDs uh, for these segments are um, pretty high up there um, in the upper 90s of course this top one is 100% um, of course it's only 224 um, bases and if we go back here you'll see there we're actually looking at 3921 nucleotide base pairs and of those um, here you have 224 at 100% ID now of course that could just be the first exon um, and the way you would go and check is um, by looking at uh, the sequence right here and um, it's going to give you the um, database location on chromosome 17 uh, genomic uh, location same thing um, the alignment score e-value um, alignment length 224 base pairs and this particular sequence is 100% uh, identical when compared from human to chimp and this could be I, I haven't really gone back to check uh, this could be the first exon that you're looking for. Uh, anyway, A gives the alignment for this particular. Of course, this is only a very small percentage of the gene, 224 base pairs uh, versus uh, almost 4,000. Um, so for that percentage to be 100% is not particularly impressive um, because it's just a small portion of the gene. But anyway, um, then we have the genome sequence button here you can hit that uh, it's going to give you this uh, which is um, including a 300 base pair flanking sequence uh, both upstream and uh, downstream and we're looking uh, you can do the um, chromosome coordinate system um, if it were a scaffold or if you want to do it on the contig that's fine too whichever you like um, it's going to give the orientation forward relative to selected alignment um, etc etc anyway whoops okay now and um, this is what you get um, for that one so we're going to look now at the last little item which is the contig view now this is the one that's kind of important for one of the things that I'm looking for in an alignment which because location it's location 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 um, we're gonna just click on that real quick because this is one of the things when you look at the region in detail and this is for chimp and um, good news is here's the ACE gene in CHIMP. Now it didn't show up for some reason in the ortholog list um, and usually that reason is because the percentage of similarity um, programmed in for an ortholog search 
it has to meet a minimum of 50% of similarity before it shows up. But which, and there may be some problems with the algorithms because it seems to me that I remember seeing um, things show up that were less than, sometimes even much less than 50%. But for some reason, that's one of the parameters that they put on the website. Even though I've seen some come in less, you know, maybe because those particular genes were annotated in a different way. I don't know. There's a lot. Of, it seems like there's a lot of glitches with the Ensemble website um, as far as the ortholog searches. Um, and from some of the... Um, protein sequence searches you've done on Uniprod, you've actually identified some of those problems, which um, is good news for me to know because I want to be accurate with anything that I say. Um, obviously, it would be embarrassing for me um, and has been embarrassing. Anytime somebody mentions something that um, that I've said, especially if I've said it matter-of-factly, matter to be wrong then you know it's kind of important to me it's very important to me that you know anything I say be true and due diligence is something that's not um, unimportant to me it's very important to me so anyway all that being said um, here in the chimpanzee genome we have the ACE gene there it is whoops and uh, we have the location we have it um, click on that get rid of that okay we have the ACE gene overlapping the tan C2 gene um, and we have the CYB561 gene also overlapping this one is a um, looks like a reverse strand ACE gene is a forward strand CYB561 is a reverse strand and uh, tan C2 is also a for is a forward strand and you'll see how the uh, ACE gene overlaps the tan C2 gene. Um, it's kind of interesting because you can have the sequences go in opposite directions. So here we have a forward, uh, a, f uh, a positive strand gene, and here we have a negative strand gene um, being that they code in opposite directions. And uh, anyhow. Now, what we can do is go look at the same region in detail in the human genome. I got it up here somewhere. Human, right here, um, for the ACE gene. And here we have the ACE gene right here. And um, it, for some reason, it separates out the protein coding. Or, no, you know what? I think because one of these is. Um, there's two different annotations. One is the Havana. Oh, let's look at the uh, code down here. All right, yellow is the merge ensemble Havana. Um, Havana is just another genome browser. Um, and red, the protein coding. So we have the protein coding sequence in human for the ACE gene. And the Havana ensemble merge sequence is right here. So this is probably the same thing. What I like, or what I noticed when I went to look at the region in detail, and also one of the reasons why I suggested looking at the location and um, looking at the region in detail is a good way of doing that because it gives you this visual graphic. But you'll notice the tan C2 gene right here. And the CYB650, I'm sorry, the CYB561 right here does not overlap with the ACE gene in human. So let's go back. Okay. Um, the chimp sequence, they do overlap. Uh, CYB561 here in the center as a negative strand and the ACE and the tan C2 gene overlap but in human they're separate 
again chimp they overlap see and chimp they overlap and in human they do not overlap now I don't know how evolution would explain this at all maybe you have something um, maybe a rabbit you can pull out of your sleeve but um, this is one of those things that just completely contradicts evolutionary common descent because knowing how nucleotides replicate how chromosomes replicate and the um, you know you might get breaks here and there in chromosomes that might explain other phenomenon but this is just um, totally inexplicable by any sort of evolutionary common descent hypothesis um, these genes just don't over you can't separate them um, without code I, I don't even know how you would separate them um, if they were overlapping in chimp and humans and chimps had a common ancestor they should also overlap in human um, but they don't so and there's no way in the chromosomal replication process that these genes would overlap like this they're interlocked they're integrated in the chimpanzee genome um, they overlap and in the human genome they don't overlap now I don't know you can take a shot at it but um, this is pretty much one of those things that you know seals it up for me the um, concept of evolutionary common descent is just you know I don't want to hurt your feelings but um, it's ridiculous um, and I know you got a lot tied up in it you know I'm not um, I, I know that without evolution without common descent there's no way for you to explain the similarities between humans and chimps because common descent is how how you do explain the similarities between humans and chimps there's um, in, in creation we it's just the same creator the same designer designed both but it's at his discretion how to configure or create or design whatever it is that he created just like any other designer any other creator it's at their discretion to design whatever they want whenever they want however they want so you know um, I have a little bit of you know leeway um, because there's no particular way that a designer should design something or can design well maybe should depending on the nature of the designer because the character of the design denotes the character of the designer but um, then we're getting more into the design inference and um, you know I can go over that later if you're interested um, but anyway this is one of the very main reasons um, that I um, can't accept evolutionary common descent. There's other things, you know, that are fine. There are, um, you know, mutations occur, sure. Um, uh, species that do have a common ancestor exhibit certain change over time. That's pretty much a no-brainer. I have no problems with that whatsoever. But, um, the hypothesis that humans and chimps have a common ancestor even here by the overlapping um, by the genes that overlap in chimp but do not overlap in human it just there's no way I can get around this um, maybe you can I don't know but um, obviously you kinda start with the idea that humans and chimps have a common ancestor and base all your conclusions on that but in doing so you're not asking the question is there a common ancestor um, because you think it's already answered if there's a question 
that you think is already answered, why ask it again? Well, for me, the answer or the question is, was life created? Uh, another question is, are humans and chimps related? Um, and in a way, they are because they were created by the same creator. But the other question, do humans and chimps have a common ancestor, which basically is the question that comes out of evolution theory. I have to say, no, they don't. And um, this is only one of the reasons. And um, we'll get to the other ones later. All right. Well, that's enough for now. I guess I've been talking for a while. So I'll call it a day.